Solo Leveling by Chu Gong Chapter 62 Part 1 Korea in Crisis Jinwa's gaze was fixed on the daggers made from the fawn of Kamish the dragon. He could hardly believe what he was seeing on the info screen. Item, Kamish Wrath. Acquisition Difficulty? Category, Dagger. Attack Power, plus 1,500. A dagger of the best quality made by a master craftsman from the sharpest fawn of a dragon. A weapon with no equal, the dagger's strength can be amplified by the user's own ability due to its superior sensitivity to mana. All Jean Wu could see was the attack power. That's the dagger's attack power, 1,500. The dagger's base attack was 1,500 before possible enhancements. He couldn't wrap his head around it. Since a higher attack power meant an easier time cutting into enemies, Fighting with this dagger would probably feel like slicing through butter. Wait a minute. Is there any other dagger at a similar level? Jin Wu eagerly pulled up the system shop, not caring about all the eyes on him. The daggers weren't worth comparing to with their usually limited attack power, so Jin Wu searched through the swords instead. Oh, the system shop's weapons had always been of excellent quality. But even its most expensive sword was barely above 1,000. Numbers-wise, it's like I'm holding a sword in each hand. He felt the heft of the dagger in his grip and sensed an overwhelming urge to slice something, anything. Thomas noticed the shift in his expression and laughed awkwardly. Oh my, Mr. Sung! Even if I increase my defense power with an enforcement skill, that dagger will cut right through me. You don't want to kill me with a weapon I just gifted you, do you? Jean Wu had no intention of doing that. He chuckled at Thomas's feigned dismay, then focused on the dagger again. It's sensitive to mana? In order to find out what being sensitive to mana, or magic power, meant Jean Wu sent a tiny bit of his own to the dagger. Whoa! Bodyguards were supposed to keep silent and not make any unnecessary sounds, but one of them couldn't help but gasp. He quickly slapped his hand over his mouth, but with everyone's attention on Jean Wu, nobody registered his mistake. Oh my god! Despite having witnessed many things in his lifetime, Thomas couldn't help but be astonished by the black aura radiating from the dagger. The dagger is responding to my magic power. It wasn't just an aura that was coming out of the dagger. The hefty weight in his hand disappeared instantly, as if it were a mere illusion, leaving a dagger as light as a feather. Wow! It was a weapon that adjusted its weight based on the user's fighting style. Vmmmvum. Kamish Shrath shuddered as if greeting its new master. Jean Wu squeezed the handle as his heart raced. Ba dump, be a dump? He wasn't sure if this desire was coming from himself or the dagger, but he wanted to fight someone and swing around his new weapon. Jean Wu calmed himself down and stabbed the dagger back into the scale. SHHHK. The dagger stopped vibrating, and Laura and the bodyguards exhaled in relief as the black aura dissipated. Thomas glanced at her. Still think I made a bad call? Laura shook her head at the clear question in Thomas's gaze. His decision was absolutely right as long as those two daggers pointed at magic beasts instead of humans. The weapons had found their rightful master. Although Laura was an ordinary human being with no sensitivity to magic power at all, she recognized this at once. Thomas was delighted that he'd been proven right. How do you like my gifts, Mr. Sung? The most intense expressions of emotion were often shown in gestures instead of words. Jean Wu quietly gave him a thumbs up. Ha ha ha! Thomas slowly clapped as he laughed. The daggers would represent the friendship between the two men, and Thomas had no regrets at parting with such priceless items if it meant entering Jin Wu's good graces. Jin Wu didn't feel like it was a fair exchange. Are you sure I can have them for free? 
free? The smile faded from Thomas's expression. It's a small price to pay for my life and the lives of my guild members. In other words, shut up and accept them. Having already received explanations from Laura about the hidden meanings of Thomas's words, Jean Wu laughed. In that case, I graciously accept. It's my pleasure. The heartwarming moment was shattered when Jean Wu and Thomas froze simultaneously. Before Laura and the bodyguards could start to panic at the identical looks on their faces, Thomas spoke up. Mr. Sung, just now! Jean Wu gave a short nod. Chills had run down both their spines because of something situated in the sky. Jean Wu and Thomas shot out of their chairs and rushed to the window. Jean Wu groaned, and Thomas's eyes popped out of his head and jaw dropped as they took in the sight of a massive gate facing the earth. I can't believe this. I've never seen such a huge gate in my life. Thomas had been one of the first hunters to awaken, but in his many years, he had never seen a gate of this size before. Even Kamish's gate hadn't been quite so large. However, Jean Wu had actually seen a similar gate once before in the data the angel statue had presented, the gate the winged soldiers had rushed out from. The one from that memory was identical to the one currently hovering over Seoul. Jean Wu shuddered as he recalled the sky turning black from the sheer number of soldiers. Was this the source of the incredible amounts of dark matter gathering around Seoul that scientists observed? Jean Wu was at a loss for words, as were the Americans in the room. A heavy silence fell over the space. The humongous gate silently shook, as if it were going to swallow everything in the world. Those who knew that a newly formed gate wasn't in any danger of a dungeon break gathered below, taking pictures with their cell phones of the gate that blackened the sky. It was both the first gate to ever appear in Madeira like this as well as the largest gate of all time. Although there was no telling what creatures it contained, people couldn't resist their curiosity. Among the crowd were foreign reporters, who were busy filming the inquisitive swarm of people. Yes, I'm standing under the gate covering the sky of Seoul, South Korea. The gate you see now is the biggest ever recorded since Magic Beasts first appeared. As you can see, many people have come out to look at the gate. However, the grim expressions on their faces say it all. This is Nick Falwell from BBN News. They reported on the situation in their respective languages with solemn expressions. Japan, which had continued to keep a keen interest in the goings-on of their neighbor, started a special news program dedicated to the gate in the skies of Seoul. They brought on an expert, Dr. Norman Belzer, who had been monitoring the strange phenomenon for some time, and as the host finished introducing him, the doctor held up his microphone. I have warned people about the large mass of energy gathering in the sky for a while now. The huge gate appearing over Seoul is just the beginning, and I predict we will see more of these horrifying gates in many countries." The host shuddered. Excuse me? Are you saying that you're seeing the warning signs in more places? That is exactly what I would like to emphasize. Dr. Belzer went on to give the same lecture he'd given the hunters at the International Guild Conference. Because his topic of research presented real-life danger to people, he felt he had a duty to inform others of it. Seoul was only the beginning. There were eight other regions where dark matter was coalescing. The studio audience gasped and moaned as Dr. Belzer revealed the names of nine locations, along with aerial photographs. While some folks were relieved that Japan wasn't one of the nine locations, others were shocked by the crisis brewing around the world. The host asked the somber Dr. Belzer, you have studied gates and magic beasts for a long time, correct? That's right. In your opinion, what is the wisest way to handle this situation, Doctor? Belzer? The audience in the studio and the viewers in front of their TVs awaited his answer with bated breaths. Unfortunately, he didn't have a solution for them. We can only pray, 
Dr. Belzer looked at those seated in the audience. Let us pray that this unprecedented situation won't end in tragedy. As the mood in the studio grew heavy, he remarked. However, there is a silver lining. The host brightened at the doctor's declaration right before the end of the show. Perhaps there would be a way to end the broadcast on a positive note. What is it, Dr. Belzer? Luckily, the gate is over Korea. Did the doctor have some personal grudge against Korea? His unexpected statement stirred up the shocked audience. The producer of the show was aghast, worried that Dr. Belzer's comment might spark an international conflict. Thankfully, Dr. Belzer explained himself before the misunderstanding got out of hand. Korea has a hunter who has stopped several international disasters. That hunter's name was quite well known in Japan as well. Yes, I'm referring to Hunter Jin Woo-sung, who took care of the anti-magic beasts on Jeju Island and defeated the giants in Japan. Strangely, the strongest hunter in the world resided where the dark matter was most concentrated, and Dr. Belzer didn't think this was a coincidence. If Hunter's son can't stop the gate, no one can. From the rest of the world's point of view, we should be thankful that this gate appeared in Korea of all places. Should people be thankful or extend their sympathies to Korea? Dr. Belzer emphasized his point once again to a confused audience. Koreans may think I'm being cruel in the face of this crisis, but the world needn't lament Korea's situation. Were the show producers' worries not unfounded after all? Dr. Belzer seemed to be playing with the frazzled producer's mind at this point, as he proclaimed, If we ever get to the point where we need to mourn for Korea, there won't be anyone left to mourn at all. The largest recorded gate until now had been Kamish's gate in the U.S., but this new gate was easily ten times that size. Its rank was obvious even without an evaluation, but the association stuck to protocol and sent up a helicopter. Everyone on the job was a hunter, as regular employees physically couldn't withstand such large amounts of magic power. Taka kaka kaka. As the pilot, co-pilot, and two staff members flew toward the gate, they couldn't help but feel as if they were being sucked into a black hole. One of the employees inside the vibrating helicopter gazed at the massive black circle and asked his colleague, Sir, have you seen anything like this before? They had to rely solely on the light coming from the chopper because the sun had already set, but the darkness did nothing to hide the magnitude of the gate. The senior employee shook his head. No! And I'll bet no one else has ever seen a gate this size before, either. The whole world was in a panic because of this single gate being both an unprecedented size and location. Had they known that even Thomas Andre had been taken aback at the sight, this wouldn't have been a topic of discussion in the first place. While the employees were trying not to let their fear get to them, as they stared at the gate, the helicopter began slowing down as it approached its destination. The co-pilot announced, It's too dangerous to get any closer. The employees nodded in understanding and prepared to evaluate the gate's rank. Usually, they would go right up to the front of a gate, but that wasn't necessary this time. As soon as they turned on the manometer, it overloaded and died. As expected, their instruments couldn't handle the amount of magic power coming from the gate. Sir! At the senior employee's nod, the junior employee opened a line of communication to the Hunters Association in order to report on the result of the evaluation. Just then, the senior employee spotted something in the distance and yelled, Look out! His colleague flinched and looked around. WH, what is it? I think I saw a magic beast right outside. What? A magic beast? Already? It should have been impossible for a magic beast to escape from a gate that was less than a day old, but the senior employee was a high rank hunter. His perception was much better than anyone else's in the helicopter, and sure enough, over there, he pointed at what he had seen earlier. At that moment, 
Jinchil's urgent voice came over the junior employee's headset. What? What are you talking about? Sang one! Sang one you! What's going on? P President Wu, it's a magic beast. A huge magic beast has been sighted near the helicopter. What? But it doesn't appear to be any ordinary magic beast. You don't stand a chance against a magic beast in the air. That's not what I sent you in to investigate. Land right now. And no, that's not it, President Wu. Someone is riding the magic beast. What are you talking about? How could a person ride a magic? Jinchil paused as he recalled a man who did indeed ride a magic beast. Sang one. Can you see the face of the person riding that magic beast? Stand by. Oh yes, I can just about make out his face. By any chance, is it Hunter Jean Wu Song? Excuse me? Sang one pressed his face against the window and squinted. He then exclaimed, Yes, sir, how did you know that? Cree! Jin Wu rode Kaisel the winged dragon up toward the gate. As Kaisel flew directly under it, Jin Wu noted that it was like looking into a bottomless black lake rather than a gate. Its size was overwhelming, and an ordinary hunter would have found the staggering amount of magic power coming from the gate unbearable. But Jin Wu was unfazed. Judging that it was too dangerous to stick around, the association's helicopter hastily retreated at a lower altitude. Jin Wu watched them go before heading closer to the gate. The opening faced the earth, and he was now close enough that he could touch. With the black membrane still intact, he had no idea what it was like inside. If he poked it, would he penetrate the surface or would he get sucked in like with a red gate? It was possible he'd be able to take care of it before the dungeon break occurred. Expectantly, Jin Wu placed his hand on the gate's membrane. Oh? Huh? He had never experienced anything like this in his time as a hunter. The black membrane was as hard as a wall and prevented Jin Wu's hand from going through the gate. If this was some ordinary wall, I could break through, but... He pushed against the wall with all his might but it wouldn't budge. Knock, knock. Jin Wu pursed his lips as he knocked on the membrane. Something's different. He hadn't heard of a gate that an awakened being couldn't go through. Since this gate was unlike any other, would the inhabitants also differ from the usual magic beasts? Whatever they are. Jin Wu had family and friends he needed to protect, so he had no intention of letting whatever was in there anywhere near them. He had increased stats and intrepid soldiers on his side. Rayra! His army roared in response. Bottom? Jin Wu felt a mix of unease and excitement. He'd never felt this way before. He'd always assumed that there was a reason why he had been chosen as the player and granted this power by the system. Maybe it was to deal with this. I'm being silly. Jin Wu laughed at how emotional he'd suddenly gotten and took his hand off the gate. At that moment, his phone began to vibrate in his pocket. The phone call was one he'd been waiting for from the Hunters Association of Japan. Hello? Hunter Song? Yes, this is he. My apologies, but it's hard to hear you. Should I call back another time? Jin Wu smirked at the buildings below him. At this distance, they looked like tiny toy blocks. No, that's fine. I'm somewhere high up. Is this about my request? Oh, yes. I scanned all of Japan via satellite just now, but... Uncharacteristically, the representative from the Hunters Association of Japan seemed to be at a loss for words. Had something bad also happened in Japan? Jin Wu never would have guessed what the representative said next. There is no gate. Not a single new gate has spawned in Japan. After defeating the giants, Jin Wu had spent most of his time raiding dungeons in Japan. So this hit him like a bolt out of the blue. Not one. Yes, that's right. 
I contacted Hunter-related organizations in other countries in case this was an isolated case, and I discovered that. The representative hesitated, then continued, clearly vexed. Ever since that gate appeared over Seoul, all others have disappeared. It had been three hours since the appearance of the monolithic gate. What were the odds of every single gate in the world vanishing during that three-hour window? That can't be a coincidence. Stunned, Jean Wu wordlessly stared at the black mass above him. The representative cautiously probed him. Um, excuse me, but may I ask why you wanted me to locate the highest rank gate we had? Jean Wu didn't know how to answer that. How could he explain that he wanted to try out Thomas's gift of 1,500 attack power before this gate opened? Even if tomorrow the world would go to pieces, someone still has to plant an apple tree, you know? Oh, apple trees. I see. Such a great saying. Jean Wu was about to hang up after giving his vague answer, but the representative had something to get off his chest. Um, Hunter Sung? Yes. The representative faltered as if embarrassed, then confessed. I was never a fan of Korea. As you know, those ants from Jeju Island were a real headache for the Hunters Association of Japan for the past few years. As a Japanese person and an employee of the association, I didn't hold Korea in the highest regard. Jean Wu quietly listened to what the man had to say. However, it was you who changed my mind. Korea saved us. I am truly grateful to both you and your country. The representative began to sob. From the bottom of my heart, I hope that Korea doesn't go through the horrors we experienced. Giants crushing humans underfoot, cities burning, screams echoing, and the never-ending despair. It hadn't been long since that waking nightmare and the representative had experienced it firsthand. No one should ever have to go through that. Jean Wu replied softly, That won't happen. That wasn't a promise, but a declaration. He had consistently pushed himself in the pursuit of leveling up for this very reason, and it was time to show the fruits of his labor. The employee chuckled at his answer. Ha ha! I never thought I'd ever be jealous of Korea but I envy them for having you, Hunter Sung. No need to butter me up. I've got nothing else going on besides hunting magic beasts, so I'll keep visiting Japan as long as magic beasts show up there. Whoops, you got me. I can't slip anything by you, can I? And here I was, trying to score some points with you. The representative was thankful that Jean Wu had lightened the mood with banter and he bid the Korean a sincere farewell. Please keep in touch. I will. Jean Wu tucked his phone back in his pocket, then inspected the gate before him. It was eerily quiet like the calm before a storm. If the timeline for a dungeon break hasn't changed, there were about six days left. Jin Wu's eyes shone in the dark of the night. Let's head down. Cree! With a flap of his huge wings, Kaisel began his descent. The public also noticed the change the next day. Gates had disappeared, and no new ones had spawned after the monolithic gate appeared in the skies above Seoul. No one knew if this was good or bad, but there were those who welcomed the news, including President Wu and the Hunters Association of Korea. After apprehensively listening to the report, Jinchul came to a decision. Let's summon all the hunters in Korea to Seoul. Sir, that's too risky. If there's an undetected gate and a dungeon break happens, then how about summoning half of the hunters and leaving the rest where they are? As he continued to receive opposition, Jinchul slammed his hand on the conference room table. Bam! Everyone cowered at the display of rage by such a high-ranking hunter. Jinchul bared his teeth. Do you think we have the luxury to take what us into account? Everyone in the meeting room fell silent as Jinchul waved a hand toward the outside of the room and bellowed at them. 
This is an unprecedented situation. Even if we pour every resource into stopping this fucking thing, there's still no guarantee we'll win. He looked around the room. I'll take full responsibility for any damage that occurs in other areas, whether that means giving up everything I own or laying down my life to fight. After this clear display of his resolution, no one dared argue with him. Leaders have been known to kill their own squadmates in a dungeon if they didn't fall in line during life and death situations, as insubordination could lead to an entire squad's demise. It would be a crime outside of a dungeon, but dungeons followed different rules. Raids were wars with people's lives on the line, not playtime. And now, war was about to break out not inside of a dungeon, but on their own turf. Time was of the essence, and Ginchel wasn't a slipshod hunter who would waste precious seconds hearing out the opposition. Summon all our hunters to Seoul immediately. Do not excuse anyone who is able to fight. Under Ginchel's orders, every single Korean hunter converged in Seoul. It was a rather unusual sight. The roads of Seoul were congested because of the citizens leaving the city and the hunters coming in to protect it. At the hunters' associations and government's urging, residents in the areas directly under the hovering gate were evacuating to avoid the inevitable destruction. As they watched the evacuation on TV, Jean Wu turned to his mom. Shouldn't you and Gina go somewhere else too? Our neighborhood isn't in the evacuation zone. It appeared Kyunghai had no plans to leave Seoul. Their rundown apartment building was on the outskirts of the city, so the magic beasts would have to get past the defensive line of hunters to reach them. That would mean that Jean Wu would have failed on the front line. Kyunghai had faith that the flames of this crisis would never get far enough to reach them. Ji Wu returned her smile and dropped the matter. Kyunghai and Ji Wu were sitting on the floor in front of the couch, around the coffee table, while Jaina sat on the couch hugging her knees. She looked down at her brother. You don't have to go? They put out an official call for hunters, but Ji Wu was already based in Seoul so it didn't apply to him. That's only for the hunters coming from outside of Seoul. They need to report to the association once they arrive. Oh! Gina nodded as she accepted a plate of apple slices from her mother. Truthfully, Jean Wu was feeling jittery about staying put and doing nothing at this time. He wanted to level up, but there were no magic beasts and he hadn't received any more keys to instance dungeons since he got rid of the architect. Jinwa's family may have been happy that he was spending more time at home, but the man himself was itching to train. Should I skip the daily quest and go to the penalty zone? While it was enticing, it wasn't necessarily a good idea. Like the gate in the sky, he also had no idea what monster would await him in the penalty zone. The risk may be low, but there was a one in a million chance that it could put him out of commission. No need to go out of his way to take another risk at this very moment. And so he dismissed the idea. He'd have to find another way to test Kamish wrath. But what? Jean Wu was deep in thought when footage of the Hunters Association building on TV caught his eye. Now, there's an idea. Jin Wu's eyes sparkled and he couldn't stop the smile spreading across his face. Ryan, Ryan. The other party picked up quickly, as he always had. Yes, hunter son. This is Jinchil Wu. I should call you President Wu now, shouldn't I? Jinchil gave an embarrassed laugh. You can call me whatever you like. I'm in over my head, so it still feels rather awkward to be called President. After their brief greeting, the amusement faded from Jinchil's voice. Did something happen? I can't help but be worried that you're contacting me out of the blue. With the association currently in crisis mode, Jinchil had been keeping his ear to the ground. So of course, a sudden phone call from the nation's most influential hunter would put him on edge. It's nothing serious, but... Jinchil gulped nervously. Not serious. 
by Hunter Sung standards could mean a disaster by hours. Heck, the odds of it being an emergency are higher the more nonchalant he is. Jinchul attempted to calm his nerves and listen attentively during Jin was brief pause, but it truly was nothing serious. May I use the association, Jim? Despite his busy schedule, Jinchul personally escorted Jean Wu to the Hunters Association's gymnasium. As you can see, this is the current state of it. Jean Wu frowned. He had wanted to use the gym as a quiet place away from prying eyes, but it was already packed to the brim with hunters. Seeing the weapons in their hands, Jean Wu belatedly recalled the association stockpile in the storage of the gym. Are you providing weapons to the hunters who don't have proper gear? Yes. After all, President Go had prepared them for a time like this. Jean Wu nodded. This was what he wanted to show those who had criticized the Hunters Association for wasting money on weapons that the association seemed to be hoarding. The tension was palpable as the Hunters donned their borrowed equipment. At that moment, a heavyset Hunter made eye contact with Jean Wu while struggling to get his arm into a piece of mana-coated armor. Huh? In his shock at seeing the world's greatest hunter right before his eyes, he blurted out, Hunter Jean Wu Sung? What? Hunter Sung is here? The hunters looked over their shoulders, and sure enough, there stood Jean Wu next to the president of the Hunters Association, watching them. A hush fell inside the gym, and the air grew heavy. The man before their very eyes was at the top of their field and his overwhelming presence wasn't something that could be conveyed through TV screens. Their hearts began to pound as they set their eyes on the best of the best. Ba dump, be a dump, be a dump. The hunters grew excited. Some shot him envious looks while others gazed upon him with admiration. It finally sank in why Jinchul had called him here to talk instead of explaining the situation on the phone. The hunters gathered here were low-rank hunters who couldn't afford expensive gear. Being suddenly summoned here must have been mentally taxing for them, so the new president of the Hunters Association wanted to embolden them by introducing them to their strongest ally. Based on the lively look in their eyes, the plan had worked. Jinchul had led the surveillance team for a long time and the quick-witted thinking that came from his experience brought a smile to Jin Wu's face. Jin Chul sheepishly rubbed the back of his neck as Jin Wu caught on to him. So, Hunter Sun, why did you need the gym? Jin Wu summoned an item from his inventory while pretending to take it out of his pocket. I'm going to use this. Jin Chul cocked his head at the seed the size of a plum in Jin Wu's hand. And what is this? If you plant this in the ground, a magic beast resembling a tree will spawn. There is something I need to try out on a magic beast. Did you say a magic beast would grow? Jinchul's eyes widened as Jean Wu nodded. A tree-type magic beast had spat out this seed as it let loose a dying screech. If the seed wasn't destroyed, another magic beast would grow out of it. Tree-type magic beasts had a high defense and formidable stamina, so it was inefficient to hunt them again and again. Jin Wu had destroyed all the seeds except the one expelled by the dungeon boss, keeping it in his inventory just in case he saw an opportunity to use it. Because their skin was tough to cut through, as if they had iron armor on, Jin Wu had named these magic beasts ironclad trees. It'll be the perfect guinea pig to test out my new daggers. The problem was, people will panic if they see this magic beast, especially in these times. Jinchul spoke with concern. Jean Wu agreed. That's why I need somewhere private, quiet, and durable. No one outside the Hunters Association could access the gym, and it was reinforced to allow hunters to train without worry. Jin Wu turned back toward the other hunters. Many of them gripped their association-issued weapons tightly as they peeked at him, finding encouragement at the sight of him. But since it's like this, Jin Wu clicked his tongue disappointed. 
he could go to an uninhabited area of Japan, but it was too far to fly there for that sole purpose, and he didn't want to waste the shadow exchange skill. Who knew what might happen during the two hours he was over there? Jean Wu was about to leave when Jinchul made up his mind. Okay, pardon me? I will clear this afternoon's schedule and make the gym available to you. Considering how much you've done for us, you couldn't even call it special treatment. The late President Go had gone so far as to amend laws for Jin Wu, saying that they couldn't ask a hunter of Jin Wu's caliber to put his life on the line for them if they weren't willing to do at least that for his sake. The least Jin Shul could do as President Go's successor was let Jin Wu borrow the gym. Are you sure that's okay? Jinchul had to grin at Jin was concern. I may not look it, but I'm the person in charge of this organization. I'm the one who decides whether the gym is open or closed. He then clapped his hands to get everyone's attention before calling out. Who's in charge of the gym? Me, sir. As Jin Wu watched the staffer hastily make his way toward them, he realized that whether one was qualified for it or not, securing a higher position was the way to go. Thomas watched the Seoul streets congested with cars evacuating the city from his hotel room window in a luxury hotel. Laura approached him from behind with her packed suitcase. Will you stay here, sir? Yeah. Thomas tapped the window, pointing at the gate. How could I leave with that big, beautiful thing there? It's certainly huge, but beautiful. Laura was used to Thomas's eccentricities, but she was taken aback that he would call something so ominous and grotesque beautiful. Thomas turned around to look at the perplexed manager. That which makes my heart race is beautiful. He put his hand on his chest to feel his heartbeat. Ever since he'd laid eyes on the gate, his heart had continued to pound loudly. That fire-breathing dragon, this humongous gate, Hunter Sung's power. They're all beautiful to me. Thomas was not your average man. Laura chuckled as she shook her head. Thomas let his hand drop and smirked. Even if I did go back to the US, what would I do with no more gate spawning? But the Hunter Command Center is worried about you. Worried about Thomas, she said. Thomas laughed at the prospect of someone being concerned for his safety. Just hearing that makes me laugh. Besides, there's no safer place in the world than wherever Hunter Sung is. Laura couldn't refute that. It was no longer a secret that the Hunter Command Center had asked Jean Wu to protect the top-ranked hunters of the world. Thomas smiled at the speechless Laura, then turned back to the window and the monolithic gate quietly vibrating in the sky over Seoul. If that thing isn't stopped here, there's no future for humanity anyway. If Jean Wu couldn't end things here, the same disaster would happen eight more times. Then who could stop those? Thomas? Ji Gang Lu of China? Or the other national level hunters? No way. That's why I want to see it with my own eyes. Thomas continued while smiling at Laura's reflection in the window. This will either be the end of human history or a new beginning.